it's got that essence yeah. of Emma. You oh, know, so bless you. you. you know, well, so I inspired so yeah, a character totally, in the book. Totally. <gasps> Good evening, it's Emma Bunton. This is a very special 90s at nine on heart because I'm joined by one of my Spice Girl bandmates, Jerry Halliwell Horner. Hi. Oh, I like that it's double barreled. It's yeah, very, <laughs> very inclusive. It is. How are you, my love? Oh, it's so nice to be here with oh, you. I love seeing you. Basic it feels, sunshine. This is like, this is good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this, this feels is, nice. This feels really lovely. This is what we're so used nice. to. Now, you're here because you have written a new book. Jerry, you are a very clever lady. Uh, Rosie Frost and the Falcon Queen. For people who haven't got it already, yeah. can you tell us a bit about it? Rosie Frost, she's an ordinary hero, yeah. um, vulnerable, and it's about finding the courage you never knew you had. That's a modern day hero. This is an adventure story, but if you want to find your power, if you need want to stand up to bullies, or you feel marginalised or different, these four rules will help anyone. So. Anne Boleyn gave them to Queen Elizabeth I. She became the greatest monarch. Then they're given to Rosie and she stands up against the bullies. But you can use the rules. So the rule number one, to keep it simple, is have courage. Second one is united we stand, divided we fall. It's just like you and I. Yeah. I need you and you need me. Absolutely. That's a really important rule. The third one is never give up. And the fourth rule is a really important rule. And it says, to thine own self be true. If you don't like these rules, make, make up, up your, your own. own. <laughs> perfect for you, perfect make for Tati. Tati, do you know what I mean? I just think anyone can, can do with that. Yeah. I so, mean, Rosie has to go through so many things in this book, obviously, and overcome lots of things. There must be part of you in Rosie. I yeah, mean, you, I can see it already, and I'm, I'm not even through the whole book yet, but I, I can see it. I can feel it. Yeah. When I'm writing it, for example, Rosie, there is a, she loses her mum, you know, so... I lost my father when I was young and grief can be, I felt embarrassed of my like sadness. And so what you deal with, she does it in letter writing in a diary. She sort of talks about that loss, but she's really angry. And so right. I put that in there. And then the, la the first chapter in the book, I wrote it last. And because my editor said to me, you need to like show where Rosie came from. And so I wrote it and it, after I read it back, I didn't realize I'd just written what I experienced. I was in a school classroom and I got pulled out saying, your dad is dead. Oh my God. Uh, and so, but I just used it. Does that make yeah. sense? You sort of wrap it up in a different way. Yeah. You sort of use those feelings. But then you might find, like Charlie is my favorite, one of my favorite characters, he's gorgeous, but he's got your kind heart. Oh. He's like one of the good guys in life. Do you know what I mean? He's got that essence yeah. of Emma. Oh, yeah, so bless you. you. you know, what, so I inspired so a yeah, character totally, in the book. Totally. <gasps> what I do yes. is I take characters and put them sort of a bit of you. It's like being a chef, yeah. so to speak. The energy that it, it takes, my goodness. Well, you said seven years as well. How did your family feel about that? Okay, so Christian was like eye-rolling at me sometimes <laughs> when I'd go off for hours disappearing with Rosie. Yeah. And then I'd want to read him little bits and he'd, he'd say, no, I'll, I'll read it when it's published. And then he goes, and you'll get this about this typical partners, right? <laughs> so it, so fi finally, I give it to him. And he, this was like, he was just getting on a plane. This was a few weeks ago. And he went, the first thing he got into 100 pages of it. And he went, oh, it's much better than I thought it would be. And I was like, oh, thanks, <laughs> right? And then he said, then he said, oh, actually, I couldn't put it down. I just, he whizzed through it and I thought, Okay, my work is done. I love it as well because I was thinking about this the other day. You have had kind of a bit of Marilyn Monroe, a bit of Linda Carter, a bit, a bit of Elvis, a bit of Madonna. And I was thinking, you know, that was your vibe back in the Spice Girls. But I was thinking, you know, what? who do you relate to now? It's always been that is probably Audrey Hepburn. Oh, I really yes, love you do, her. Don't I've you? always lent on her. I just think she's timeless as well. The thing I've always think is that, and I, I said it to um, your husband the other night because he was wearing a pearl necklace, oh, and I was, was. like, <laughs> you know what? And I'm originally from Watford. And I said Watford girls wear pearls. That's the point. Is that it doesn't matter who you are. You're allowed to, you know. Yeah, wear what you want. Wear you, what well, you want. we've we proved that back in the day, didn't exactly. we? You can wear whatever you want. Um, thank you so much thank for coming you. in tonight, so nice. uh, Jerry. Now we need, because sometimes I like to celebrate with a glass of something fizzy, but we will have a cup of tea. Cup Jerry of tea. loves a cup I of like, tea. I like a nice tea. And we'll get the biscuits out. Oh, that sounds good. Make fair. a cake. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Love you lots. Amazing. I love you too, Emma. Mwah. Mwah. This is hard.